In this video, I'm gonna talk about why does salt scaling damage concrete? My name is Tyler Lay and I make these videos to try to teach you as much as I can about concrete. Salt scaling damage usually happens in the winter when it's cold outside. There's snow and ice and you're worried about your driveways. You're worried about people slipping on them and so you add rock salt to them to try to de-ice them or melt away some of the ice in certain spots. And then once things warm up, you realize that you've just totally damaged your concrete. This is called salt scaling. So why does this happen? This is explained by something called the glue spall mechanism, first introduced by Shear and Valenza. Here's a side view of a concrete slab. When it's snowing outside or very, very cold, People pour de-icers on the surface because they don't want people to slip. And that forms a brine. The de-icer melts the snow or the ice. It combines with the salt and it forms a brine. That's great. The brine delays freezing. But once it gets cold enough, ice will still form. And once ice starts to form, it's pretty crazy. There's kind of a tight bond between the ice and the concrete. Let's zoom in so I can show you what I'm talking about. That ice will actually penetrate the pores inside the concrete and holds them together very, very, very tight. This is kind of like glue. And this is kind of like what happens when you stick your tongue ah, to a freezing pole and you get stuck. The ice crystals actually go inside your tongue and grab onto it. And this is where the glue part comes from in the glue spall mechanism name. The ice glues itself down to the concrete. So over time, when this ice forms, there's no salt in the ice. Doesn't happen. The salt stays in solution and the ice is just pure frozen water. So in these other areas where there's no ice, you actually get higher concentration of brine. It gets saltier. So as more ice forms, it gets harder for the ice to form, but then the concentration of the brine gets even higher. Now, let's look from the top. If we could look from above, we would see that as this ice starts to form, it goes everywhere, but there's these certain pockets, these regions where there's like almost pure, super salty water, no ice there. And around those regions, there's almost always imperfections. And ice is a very brittle material, and so it often, it cracks. And those cracks, actually, if we could look at them in a cross section, they'll extend down through the ice all the way inside our beautiful concrete. So as the temperature drops even more, the ice is gonna start to shrink. Or perhaps it's caused by the fracture itself releasing energy, and then the ice again begins to shrink. But remember, Remember, there's this super tight bond between the ice and the concrete. So that ice and concrete are like glued together. So as the ice goes, then so does the concrete. And that brings it up. It actually rips the concrete up. It's almost, if we could look at one part of it, just this one part of it, it's kind of like a can opener, right? Where you put your finger in and pull it up. Doesn't that kind of look like that? Well, those cracks will extend the rest of the way through the concrete and this whole region will spall out, forms a big crater. And this is why we call it the glue spall mechanism. Ugh, it looks so ugly. But have you ever wondered why is it kind of random? Why is the damage not uniform? Well, we may have local weak spots in the surface of our concrete from poor curing or poor finishing. It also could be that we have random formation of these brine pockets. So it's hard to predict exactly where this is gonna happen. Here's another crazy observation. If we actually use no salt, if we don't salt, we'll actually not get any spalling. If we use a moderate amount of salt, then we'll actually get a lot of spalling. But if we use high amounts of salt, we again get no spalling again. And all of this doesn't depend on the type of salt we use. You're like, what? How is that possible? Well, this is the one I showed you before. At a two to 3% concentration of the, of, of the de-icer salt, you get damaged. 
because these pockets get to a certain size, they start to cause cracks. Those cracks propagate inside the concrete. They cause damage. But if I have no salt, then I'll have no damage because I have no brine pockets. But if I use super high concentrations, lots and lots of salt, very high concentrations, then I'll get no damage because my brine pockets will never get small enough to cause damage. I'll keep the ice from totally forming. Now this sometimes is not practical. This is very expensive to do and could cause other damages to your concrete, but it won't spall. So in conclusion, the formation of brine pockets cause this ice and then this concrete to crack and ultimately spall. And this depends on the salt concentration in the solution, but not on the type of salts. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell. The bell is this little icon that you can hit when you subscribe to make sure that you'll be notified every single time I release a new video. One easy way to find my videos is to go to my YouTube channel, click on the little icon over here and type in whatever term you want. And I probably have a video about it. If I don't, I wanna know. Please send me a comment and let me know about that. Take care, go!